Welcome back to today's Photo Minute. My name is Brian Osborne from the Photo Classroom, and today I wanted to do a segment on camera equipment. I know many times we're talking appropriately about uh, different types of uh, actual skills and techniques, um, but I wanted to take a break from that and just uh, take a chance to talk about a little bit about camera equipment. And in fact, what really got me thinking about this is we actually have two equipment related classes coming up. We have a brand new class on the pros and cons of mirrorless cameras uh, coming up next week where we're going to kind of explore what really is the first year of my impressions of uh, adding a mirrorless camera to the mix. And I'll mention that again in a minute and uh, what some of the pros and cons are from considering moving to mirrorless um, in, a, in conjunction or from a digital SLR uh, system. We also have a class uh, the following week on uh, equipment, photography equipment, everything you need to know, and we get into camera, uh, sp specifically lens choices, accessory choices, filters, uh, camera bags, etc., and, and how you can make some wise decisions putting those pieces together. Um, but more so, I wanted to really uh, answer a question that's really asked of myself, as well as many other photographers, and that is uh, what, uh, what's in your bag? What kind of camera equipment do I use? And, um, and I think the more important question that we should be asking is why do I use it? Um, it's easy to get kind of caught up in camera gear, and uh, I really believe uh, from uh, all the instruction, the interaction I have with uh, all of our students, that it's not so much about the camera we have, it's really about the skills and the techniques that we work hard at growing in. However, um, many people are interested in what kind of cameras I use, and more importantly, I want to make sure that I'm clear about why I've chosen to use certain cameras. And you, some of you may be very surprised by some of the choices I've made, uh, but I want to be able to explain why I made those choices and uh, why it's worked out very, very well for me. I also just want to kind of start off with uh, just uh, uh, one other um, statement of fact, and that is just the fact that for me, uh, photography is a career, it's my profession, and so please keep in mind that um, even though I own, my own uh, a lot of cameras and uh, a lot of lenses to go with that, this is what I do to make a living. And so um, these cameras are not just things that sit in the bag most of the time. These are cameras that are used extensively for both my own personal photography as well as my professional uh, photography pursuits. And as a professional photographer, I actually am very uh, well versed in doing lots of different types of professional photography and that sometimes adds to the needs uh, that I have in terms of equipment as well. But you might be surprised that maybe I haven't spent quite as much money and I'm not using all the cameras that maybe you've been told that uh, a professional photographer would use. And so let me get to uh, some of the camera choices and why I've made those. Many of you already know that I am uh, definitely a Nikon photographer. I uh, have always appreciated Nikon uh, gear for many, many different reasons, which I'm not going to go into today in today's segment. Um, but uh, Nikon is by far the system that I've uh, been familiar with for many, many years and plan to continue to be in that system with the different uh, options that they offer. Uh, my favorite camera of all time to this point, and uh, even though it's discontinued, it was actually discontinued about a year ago, is the Nikon D7200. This camera, when it first came out, was about a $1,200 price point, so you kind of get an idea of where I want to come in, kind of the top end of where I would usually come in with a camera body purchase. Um, about $1,200, now you can buy them used for about five, dollars $600, but just a great, great camera. And, uh, and you say, well, what do you like so much about the Nikon D7200? Well, um, one of those things is if you read enough camera reviews uh, about it, it's probably one of the best image quality producing cameras Nikon has ever made in the digital world. Um, dynamic range, the ability to capture a wide range of contrast, and uh, high ISO performance. I actually still think that this camera shoots as good of images if not better than even the newer generations of cameras, some of which I own and some of which I don't own. Um, but uh, love the image quality that comes off the Nikon D7200. It's a camera that's certainly laid out for a, for a person that's pretty well versed in photography. There's a button and a wheel for all the important controls that I would need to be able to master and be able to change quickly. Um, but beyond that, uh, it's a fairly lightweight camera. Uh, compared to many of its peers, uh, it's, uh, it, it's a camera that is certainly uh, not nearly uh, quite as heavy. It allows me to use a battery grip and still not have a lot of weight and even not a lot of bulk. And, um, and it is also a crop sensor camera, and I guess that's important that I should have mentioned a little bit before this. Uh, I, I really prefer using crop sensor cameras to full frame cameras, and that alone sets me 
kind of in a whole different uh, area of selection of camera bodies than uh, many of my working professional peers. However, that's fine. Um, instead of a full frame camera, I've always preferred using a crop sensor camera. I think I get all the image quality I need out of that. And I also get uh, some more uh, options in terms of lenses, etc. So uh, it's uh, just a great DX or crop sensor camera by Nikon, Nikon D7200. The last feature I really, really enjoy having is the built-in flash. Now, uh, you say built-in flash, um, yeah, I use it for fill flash sometimes, but many times I'll use an accessory flash if I'm gonna do fill flash photography outside, etc. However, I love having the built-in flash because it also allows me to use the built-in flash as a trigger for Nikon's entire wireless flash system. And uh, whether it's personal or business, um, I often uh, just use that built-in flash and that allows me from the back of the camera to control multiple wireless remote flashes. And so I love having the built-in flash in that camera body. I have two Nikon D7200s. Uh, they both have been with me for quite a while. Um, my plan is to wear them both out. Uh, I think they both are in the range of 180, 190,000 images on each camera body. Uh, many of you know that I shoot around 130 to 140,000 images a year and I've done that for many, many years. And so um, I, I use these cameras, I use them a lot and I, uh, I, I do a lot of shooting with these. Uh, the second D72 body is over here with my big telephoto lens. And if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you know that this is probably the one that captures all the images that you see in the yard of the wildlife that I've enjoyed shooting. Uh, when I have the opportunity to as well. So two Nikon D7200s, both not super high dollar investments, both uh, just use them completely um, and will continue to use them uh, as long as I can and as long as I continue to meet my needs, which probably be for a while. Uh, the second newest camera in my lineup is the Nikon D500. Obviously an excellent camera, a renowned uh, camera model in terms of quality and performance in many different ways by Nikon. Original selling price was about uh, $1,800 uh, for the camera body. So it's, it's actually the camera body that I've spent the most money on uh, at the time. You can now get them used for under $1,000. Uh, great camera, still a crop sensor camera body with a little bit better build, a little bit better weather sealing, uh, a better autofocus system, and then what uh, most of us really enjoy is a, a higher frame rate. So instead of seven images per second uh, at high speed uh, frame advance, I can do 10 pictures per second. And that has been great specifically for sports and wildlife. So this is a, a camera that I don't use for general photography most of the time. I only really use this camera for uh, wildlife and for sports. Having said that, uh, last year I actually used up the shutter. I blew out the shutter at 225,000 images, got it replaced by Nikon. I have a brand new shutter in there and uh, we'll see if I can do another 125,000 of just sports and wildlife pictures on the Nikon D500. Uh, why don't I use it as my general everyday camera? Two reasons, it's a little bit heavier. It's, it's not terrible, it's actually a great feel in my hands, but it's a little bit heavier than the 7200s and it also does not have a built-in flash. And I just really like the idea of having a built-in flash to use wireless flash control in multitude of uh, especially business situations that I walk into. So it's really a camera that's reserved for wildlife and for sports. Um, uh, just over a year ago, decided I wanted to start to at least try out some Nikon mirrorless cameras and just get a taste uh, for my students' sake as well in terms of mirrorless, what was out there, how they worked, were there some advantages, etc. And so my first mirrorless camera was the first um, DX camera body, the only DX camera body right now that Nikon has put out in the mirrorless system, and that is the Nikon Z50. Uh, the Z50 is about a $1,200 price point with two kit lenses. I have the larger telephoto lens on. Uh, I say large, but it's actually pretty uh, compact. Uh, I love the 16 to 50 millimeter lens, which is even a, a lot shorter than this. And this has been a great all around walk around camera. Um, this is not a camera that I see um, even after the year of using it, uh, taking over all my photography needs, uh, but it is a camera that for just the enjoy of going out, taking pictures, not carrying quite as much gear around, um, walk around photography, touring, um, landscapes, etc. I have really enjoyed this camera. Um, and I think I've used it a great deal. Um, even though it's my second camera, uh, or it, it's actually third or fourth camera in my system, uh, I did about 20,000 pictures on it last year. And it, it's been a fun camera to uh, get in the mirrorless and to try out. I really like the form factor, etc. 
Many of you at this point are saying, well, wait a minute, I can't believe he doesn't have a full frame camera. Well, I actually do, but not necessarily um, initially by choice. Uh, about two years ago, I purchased a specialty lens called a tilt shift lens. It's a fixed 24 millimeter lens by Nikon, and I purchased it to do architecture pictures, although I found lots of other cool uses for this really special purpose lens. The only problem is, is that on a 24, it is manual focus lens, which is fine, but on a uh, crop sensor camera, 24 millimeters is not very wide at all. So I found myself almost immediately realizing that I was going to need to invest in a full frame camera that may allow that 24 millimeter to be a little bit wider angle um, for specifically architecture needs. And so what I invested at the time was a Nikon D610. Uh, that's probably not a surprise if you really uh, know anything about the camera because it is a great uh, mirrorless, I mean a great uh, full frame camera body by Nikon built on basically the same format as the Nikon D7200. And so um, that was my main camera that I would be using if I needed wider angle, especially with the, the tilt shift lens that didn't, uh, that was really designed for a, for a full frame sensor. And so that was the camera I used. I didn't use a lot, but I enjoyed it. And then just recently decided that if I was going to be, need a full frame camera just for the sake of architecture, that I might try out yet a second mirrorless camera. And so the, what's doing this video right now is the Nikon Z5, which is uh, Nikon's entry level full frame mirrorless camera. And I've only had it about uh, a month and a half, two months. I've enjoyed using it for video. I enjoy using both the mirrorless cameras for videos. And um, I think for doing some architecture with that tilt shift lens, especially in the manual focus part of that tilt shift lens, there's some neat benefits to um, mirrorless on that side. And so I do have one full frame camera and right now presently, that is the Nikon Z5 as my full frame camera that I can adapt to use uh, my older DSLR lenses on. Um, I hope this information is helpful, but more importantly, I just want you to, to hear clearly from me that uh, um, there's some important choices that I made. And unlike many of my peers, um, I don't feel like I'm less or more of a photographer, especially in the professional realm, because I don't use full frame cameras or because I do. Um, uh, or that I uh, would feel like I need to purchase multiple $3,000 camera bodies or even what would really be pro level would be a, a multiple $6,000 camera bodies. Um, I've just always felt like uh, it's a tool. It's a tool that I want to get the most out of and that I don't necessarily have to buy higher than um, I do in order to get um, better image quality. In fact, I certainly don't believe that uh, any camera is gonna necessarily give me better image quality over any other camera. Uh, I think you can clearly understand that these cameras have been great choices that have not only allowed me to get a lot of use out of their specific purposes, um, but without spending as much money as some of my peers do on camera bodies, um, I'm able to purchase lenses, purchase backup lenses, purchase multiple camera bodies. And so if something goes wrong, if, there is a, if a camera body fails or, or if a lens fails, I actually have backups of almost literally everything. And so that has been more important for the same amount of resources financially for me than necessarily spending all of my money just on a, a couple high-end camera bodies that uh, maybe, maybe out there in the professional market, other people would say, well, you have to have this camera to be this level of photographer. Um, I, I enjoy the image quality that I produce and um, uh, I've found that these cameras do a great job in order to do that. So I, I, so I want you to hear that clearly as well so that um, you don't feel like uh, you need to go buy extra stuff to make yourself better. Uh, most of us just need to continue to work on our skills and our techniques. Uh, but I did want you to, to uh, just be able to know what cameras I use and uh, maybe more importantly, why I've chosen to use those specific camera bodies. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, once again, please let me know with uh, comments or uh, with email uh, questions, um, anything that I can help you with when it comes to equipment uh, uh, questions. And uh, my name is Brian Osborne, The Photo Classroom, and this is today's Photo Minute.